Be careful on the advice that you are taking from Etsy experts and gurus. The worst Etsy advice that I have seen, and this was sent to me from Chris, um, who he found in a Facebook group, and uh, this is what it said. Just heard on a podcast hosted by one of those Etsy experts that if you don't have any sales within your first 45 days on the platform, that you should give up and start a new shop. Has anyone here had no sales, started a new shop, and had success? Well, number one, I first off just wanna say, I believe that that is the dumbest advice I've ever heard, okay? Because Etsy is not going to penalize you because you have a shop that hasn't had any sales. There have been plenty of shops that have started five years ago and they didn't do anything. They had like 50 sales and then just let it sit. And then, I don't know, five years later, they come back and they start new and they might even have a new niche. They might even have a new direction. And they're like, you know what? We're going to go ahead and start selling again. And they've had success. I actually uh, recently on one of our Etsy shop audits, uh, I interviewed someone there as we were doing the audit. And uh, she was telling me, I, I think I started this, I think she said 2013. And then she started it back up in 2020. And she's doing pretty good. So I don't believe that we should be giving advice for people to open a shop and then if it doesn't get sales in 45 days, kill it, start a new shop. Do you think that that's what Etsy wants? And I guess the logic here was, is that uh, Etsy might look at this as, well, it's been optimized poorly. So because of that, we're going to give it a bad score. That's not the way that it works. Pretty much Etsy doesn't care so much about the shop as much as they do about the listing. So the listings are their own entity. They're their own thing. Now, is there some effect from a shop that's doing really well, that's proven track record, that's got a star seller? Yeah, there's probably something there. But a lot of times it takes months to achieve that. So the way that I look at it is, yeah, your shop, you might've started it in one niche and then you wanna pivot to another one. So just pivot it and then start letting Etsy know who you're starting to serve. Like, but to, to open a shop and delete, like, so what happens if you open a shop and in 45 days you don't get any sales or you get five sales or less and then you delete your shop? You open a new one and the same thing happens. You delete another one and then you delete, delete another one and then you delete another one. Don't you think Etsy's gonna look at that? Like, why, why are you keep, oh, why do you keep opening shops and closing shops, right? Like, that's gonna draw a red flag. So I think that is the worst advice. Uh, I don't agree with it. Um, and if someone has any proof, please leave that in the comments so we can, uh, well, so we can see it. Do you think that Etsy would give that advice? I think that's another little filter we should run. Do you think Etsy would say, Hey, listen, your shop hasn't had sales in 45 days or it's had three sales. Uh, we don't feel it's been optimized properly. So we're going to, we're going to recommend that you delete your, uh, your shop. You start a brand new one up and then, uh, we'll give you another shot. Do you really think guys, let me know in the comments. Do you think that that's, that that's true? I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I think that's the, the dumbest, uh, thing I've heard. Uh, and I know I, some people be like, well, why are you saying it's dumb? It just might, you know, be something that someone felt was the good thing to, I don't know. I, I just, I do not believe um, that we should be giving advice like that because I know people are going to be listening to an expert like this and they're going to be doing it. That's what I think experts don't realize is, and I realize this, there's things that I am saying that you are going to try. And I, I want to make sure that I am as honest and as transparent. And if I have not done it, I am not going to recommend it. So I have never started a shop and had low sales and then deleted it or heard of anybody else. That's the other thing. Let's say it wasn't me. It was someone else. If I had someone else that did it and they're like, Scott, it was amazing. I did it. And all of a sudden I had all these sales. What they probably also uh, probably didn't realize was they probably just picked a better product and had more demand. And uh, they probably optimized that listing better. <laughs> so this, this piece of advice, like a lot of the terrible advice that we see in the Etsy ecosystem, it does come from a little tiny grain of truth 
layered with a complete misunderstanding of how Etsy works, right? The, the little tiny grain of truth here is just like with the new listing bump that you get on Etsy, right? When a new listing comes out because Etsy doesn't know exactly how it stacks up against the competition, they give it a little bit of a boost to make sure it gets in front of some people. They do give you a little bit of a boost when you first create your shop in order to establish what they refer to as the shop score. That could run out somewhere in the first like month and a half to two months as you start to get traffic. But where this really becomes a silly thing to think about and where I think it's terrible advice is the vast majority of sales, like 98% of sales until you have a sales history are not coming from your shop. They're coming from your listings. And so where the misunderstanding in this comes in is if you haven't gotten sales in 45 or 60 days, it has nothing to do with your shop and everything to do with the products that you picked and the listings right? It's not that you don't have good SEO or good luck. It's that you probably picked some crappy products that don't have any demand, right? If you're not getting views and you're not getting sales in that time frame, then we need to look at why. And it's not because Etsy didn't give the, the papal blessing to your Etsy shop page. It's because you either missed something in the product research process, you didn't pick a niche, or there's just no demand for your products. Rather than closing that shop and opening a new shop where you open yourselves up to maybe you didn't pay 20 cents on that, right? And now we're going to open a new shop. And once we get that new shop open, Etsy's going to shut everything down because we have a 20 cent balance, right? That's already happened to some people. So rather than saying, oh, the problem was the shop, we need to figure out what the problem actually is. And that that little grain of truth comes back to the listing. This is a product and listing problem not a shop problem. And if you have a product and listing problem in this shop and you don't learn the lesson, then opening a new shop doesn't solve that problem for you. Guess what? No one cares about your shop right away, right? The only thing they care about is the listing that's put in front of them as a customer. And if we can't get our listings in front of people, it's not about what's happening on the shop page. It's about what happens on the listing page. So if we can double check that we have demand and that we're only creating quality listings for products that have demand, that's going to get us the rest of the way there. Shutting down a shop, moving things around, not learning our lessons. That's just terrible all around advice. Be careful on the advice that you are taking from Etsy experts and gurus. I've said this before. I do not look at myself as an Etsy, Etsy expert or a guru. I look at it as someone that has just done some things and I'm just reporting back right? I've never heard of that. I've never tried that. I've never heard of anybody trying it. So I can't recommend it. I think it's silly. I would not do it. I would say just focus on your shop, focus on getting good products that have good demand, take care of your customers and just put your head down and focus. And you will probably, you'll probably get some sales and you'll probably start building a little successful shop. So that's my advice. You can do it. You don't have to do it. You can listen to those other guys or the girls, um, whichever, but, uh, that's my advice.